Which one of you is Misak Petrosian? Me. What do you want? I've been looking for you. I'm from San Francisco. This road does not belong to the railroad. It belongs to the state of California. Permission to pass, not revocable at any time. I say that right, Ryan? You told them right, Pa. We are going over that pass. Nobody is going to stop us. Nobody. Now watch the test. and proved effective against cavities and vigrant that helps something like a spark plug. The year 1907 is a good one for the farmers of the great California Valley. Most of them are immigrants from Italy, Greece, and Turkey. For these new Americans, this year brings a bumper crop and a rich harvest. Now, with the hard work over, it is time to celebrate. Uh, where are the mercers, huh? Don't worry, no, they'll no, be no, here. No, no, these crazy amount of cats. It's all they know when the meat is ready, you must eat it. That is it. Mr. Mercer! Hey, 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 Mr. Mercer, over here, huh? Is the shish kebab? Hey, perfect, perfect. I don't think I put enough spice in it. Perfect. Yeah. Huh? All right. Mr. Mercer, the shish kebab tastes so good, you're going to bite your fingers, huh? Sit down. Come on, come on, come on. We'll put this in the cover to keep it cool. Right, right, right. Here, have some wine, huh? How are your grapes, huh? Oh, all cut and dry. And right. I never see such muscat. Three boxes, one vine. Boy, the weather keep like this, huh? Can have raisins in two weeks. I just hate to think of the prices. Prices? Well, we got a good year here. We got a good crop. We get a good price. I feel it in my bones, huh? This year, we sing. Wait, 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 wait. Get dry, get dry. You're too cold, huh? Pa! What, what? Look what I brought up from the bottom. <laughs> Ah, my kid, huh? Hey, get out of there. Go get dressed and you eat, huh? Go, huh? Ah. Ah, I'm all. Huh? Mm. I told you before, it needs more spice. It's perfect. Perfect! Pa! Pa! There's a man over there buying raisins. Step right over here, gentlemen. Don't be bashful. I'm buying raisins. Big ones, fat ones, little ones, anything you've got. You know who that is? No. Oh. He's the buyer from San Francisco. Mm -hmm. The raisins ain't even off the ground. He's already bitten. <laughs> uh, you hear how much he offered? I heard him say six cents a pound. 
Six cents a pound. What'd I tell you, huh? What'd I tell you? You won't have to ask me twice. I'm selling. Oh, you go get the dress, huh? Mr. Mercer, my good friend, my good neighbor. If he offers six cents a pound now, hmm, how much are you gonna offer later? The man would have to be crazy to turn down six cents a pound. Marik, did you hear six cents a pound? Isn't your husband going to sell? Oh, no, no, no. Niggas have a lot. Oh, no, no, no. I hear you're buying. That's right. I hear you're paying six cents a pound. That's the price laid down on the docks in San Francisco. You've got a deal. I have close to six tons. I'll take all you've got. Drop around the Fresno Hotel tomorrow and I'll give you a contract. He's buying right and left. He just bought up my whole crop. You better get over there. Well, I think I wait. You mean you're gonna let him go without selling? The price is going higher, huh? You're crazy! Well, you see how crazy I am. Elisa, talk at your husband. He has no wings. He's trying to fly. Hey, so Sorry, Elisa. All his life a man waits. Always next year. This is our year. I feel it in my bones. Hmm? By golly, I'm hungry. Come out, everybody, we eat. Huh? Jesus, Lori. Stop it! They're like two young roosters you're fighting. What for? He said you're crazy. He said you're gonna make us starve to death. He don't say I'm crazy as Papa say I'm crazy. Sure, that's right. I said it. And I was right. You're stubborn crazy. Ten cents a pound. Uh, Mr. Mercer, when I get ten cents a pound for my raisins, you know what you are going to do? Huh? Mr. Mercer, my beautiful, wonderful neighbor and friend, you're going to walk under my mustache, huh? <laughs> For people of the California Valley, this is a memorable year. The year they've been waiting for. The chance to pay their debts, to put money in the bank. From world markets stirred by unforeseen events came a demand that drove the price of raisins from five to six to eight and finally to 10 cents a pound laid on the dock in San Francisco. Yeah. Wear your hat. The sun will burn you. I'm all right, Ma. Uh, do like your mother tells you. Huh? Me suck. You always expect so much. And you get very angry when you get disappointed. Well, Mr. Bailey, he tell me himself. Ten cents a pound. Sorry, you hear him tell your mother. He said ten cents a pound, Ma. It's nice when I come uh -huh. home. Pockets full of gold, huh? Be happy if they are half full. Two more trips. And tonight we will sit around the table counting the money, huh? Hmm? Do you know what that money will do for us? How many times you've gone to town with an empty purse, huh? No more! You. How long you scratched to save a few pennies? No more. This year, we start to live like Americans, huh? Uh-huh. Of 
more than double. That's right. Pretty steep, isn't it? It's the highest I've ever seen. They don't leave much for the farmer, do they? Think they'll stand still for it? Well, what else can they do? Come on, Misak, I'll figure this out and pay you. Already my palms are itching, huh? Hey, Mr. Mercer, my good neighbor. I say you would walk under my mustache, huh? See, it is ready, huh? <laughs> hey. What's so sad? Ah. Wait, I tell him, wait, the price is going up. But now he's got us up. Now the price is up? No raisins to sell? Long face. Don't you worry, Mr. Mercer. When your family is starving, I, this ark will feed them. <laughs> Why is everybody so sad, huh? Oh, maybe you don't get the price that Pedrosian and Son get, huh? But you get good money, too. All right, Misak. It figures out 4,822 pounds. Ten cents a pound, huh? Twenty, forty, sixty, eighty, a hundred. Twenty, forty, sixty, eighty, two hundred. Twenty, forty, sixty, eighty. And there you are. Two hundred eighty-four dollars and two cents. Two hundred eighty-four dollars? That's right. You brought in 4,822 pounds of raisins. Sai. Forty-eight hundred twenty-two pounds, ten cents a pound. What is that? Four hundred eighty-two dollars, twenty cents. How much is that? Two hundred eighty-four dollars and two cents. My son, he figured in his head he'd make a mistake, huh? No, he figured right. But he didn't take out the freight charge. Freight charges. The price is 10 cents laid on the Embarcadero in San Francisco. You tell me 10 cents? It's all there on the bill of lading, Bedrosian. The handling, demurrage, and freight charges. I always pay the railroad to take my raisins to San Francisco. But what is this? Well, I don't make the freight rates, Bedrosian. They jacked up the freight rates. Don't you understand me, Sack? But the prices go up. The rates, they go up, but too. The way the lad will fix the rates. No matter what we get, we end up the same way. Watch what you're doing. That's railroad property. Mr. Railroad! You put your hand in my pocket, you steal my money. You know better than that, Petrosian. The railroad's not in business for its health. I want my money. There's your money! I don't know what you're complaining about. You paid a lot more than a man that you could get working for wages. Mizok Petrosian does not work for wages. He works for Mizok Petrosian. I take my right. Well, you can't do that, Petrosian. That deal is a deal. Now, here, take your money. Take my raisins. Let him go. But before you do, Petrosian, I think you ought to know. The price I quoted is good for two weeks. Those raisins are going to Australia. After that ship leaves, there's no telling when I'll be buying again. <laughs> Takes his raisins to town and brings them back. 
please, Mom. It's true. If he had sold his razors, he would be looking ahead to next year instead of the end of his nose. I do the right thing. Miss Alpidozin is not somebody to lie down and people walk over him. How will we live? What will we eat? Raisins, huh? Beautiful raisins, seven tons of them. In the end, you'll be forced to sell like the others, Misa. I don't sell. Oh. Never, never, never. This is not talking. This is America. In talking, you talk, they cut your throat. Here, everybody got a right to speak. I like the President of the United States a letter, huh? He stopped the railroad from sheet to farm. But the President, he lives in Washington. By the time you get his answer, it will be too late to sell the raisins. Uh, you could write a letter to the governor of California. He lives in Sacramento. He'd get your letter in a couple of days. Right, write what I say. Greetings to you, governor. Me, Ms. Ogbedrosian, has the honor to write you a letter. I am a farmer who raises grapes and makes raisins. I sell my raisins in San Francisco. But the railroad, every year they jack up their price so I can make no money, huh? I want you, as the governor of this state, to do something. I am a taxpayer, too. Food is to people what gasoline is to cars. But a full tank isn't enough. A car needs spark plugs to convert that fuel to energy. Now, vitamins are not spark plugs, but they do help spark food you eat into energy you need. While food provides vitamins, everyone may not be getting enough vitamins in his diet. To help make sure you get them, get Vigran, the squib multivitamin that helps like a spark plug. Help spark food you eat into energy you need. Get Squib Vigran, the multivitamin that helps something like a spark plug at your drugstore. Ah, oh, that sore throat. For minor sore throat due to colds, take Spectrosin T lozenges from Squib. Spectrosin T gives first aid for sore throat. First aid to help reduce bacteria. First aid against pain. First aid for sore throat. Spectrosin T from Squib at your drugstore. Yeah, Mercer, so you wait, huh? We got ten cents a pound. You ain't going nowhere, Mercer. Sir. Sir. If we stick hey, together, no we can sell it for ten cents a pound. Work, work. You don't ah. even get ten cents. It's my business if I want to deliver my raisins. No, it's my business, no. too. It's everybody's business. Uh, you yeah. be glad we stop you. Or oh, we get the railroad to take their hand out of our pocket. That's right. Ah. Ah. You have no right to stop these men. Let them through. No. Well, what are you waiting for, Sheriff? Get them to move. Those boxcars should have been in San Francisco two days ago. Same thing happens every year. Some sorehead trying to tell the railroad how to run this business. Open up the street, Sheriff! Ha! Ah, the letter! I got the letter from the governor! Hey, I want you to read it good and loud so everybody can hear it. Up on the way. Come on, 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 give us. Buy it now. Let him read the letter. Read, read. Dear Mr. Bedrosian. That's to you. That's to me, huh? The governor has asked me. Hey, where? Keep going, Mr. Governor. What? Uh, what? From the governor? This was from the governor. I didn't say nothing. Well, let him read the letter. The, letter. Huh? the governor has asked me to acknowledge your letter of the fifth instant and to inform you of his deep concern. Uh, further down, uh, the railroad, about the railroad. Oh, Here it is. Regarding your inquiry about freight rates. Uh, what? Yeah, come on. The governor regrets. I'll regrets. bet he does. I knew that wasn't a letter from the governor. I don't understand. Governor. What's it mean? Of course, keep quiet. Huh? That under the present laws, he's not empowered to intervene. Here's the present laws. What's this? Oh, hey, what's it mean? What do you expect? Huh? What do you expect? No, expect? Big man, the governor. What does he care about the farm? Nobody cares about the farm. You know what they call us? The immigrants. They know what happened to us down here. That's a That's a wrap. Nothing. All right. Let's clear the street. Get those wagons up to the platform. We'll unload them. Move them up. Me 
Isaac. You didn't eat. You don't sleep. What are you thinking of, standing there? You're not different from the others. They sold their raisins. You're going to have to sell yours. Take what they offer you, no matter how little. What else can you do? Alisa, you do not understand. It is not their money. Not anymore. If I let them step on me, everything I have said is a lie. I am not a man. I am nothing. Fifty, hundred and seventy, hundred and ninety, two hundred. There you are. Bailey. Looks like the Armenian has changed his mind. Hi, Big Rose here. Ready to sell. The price is still the same? Right. Delivered on the dock in San Francisco as before? Right. So. Well, pull it in. Bedrosian, where are you going? Bedrosian! Bedrosian! We're going to San Francisco! Crazy army. The Great Adventure will return after station identification. Maybe it is too far? Many years ago, we come all the way from Turkey. You were just a little baby then, you don't remember. But first we go to Istanbul. From there we go to Athens, Greece, Athens, Greece, Naples, Italy. Then we get a big boat. We go huh. way across. Uh. on his way to the Embarcadero in San Francisco. Now there are six, all willing to risk their hopes, even their lives, rather than submit to the oppression that they'd left the old world to escape.
You think they're going to buck the railroad with six wagons? Maybe one or two of them get through. Who cares? And have some newspaper pick up the story? Not a chance. Not one of those wagons is going to get through to San Francisco. <laughs> Sign? It says the railroad can stop anyone from crossing its tracks anytime it wants to. Let the buggy across. Why do you let the buggy go across? He's not hauling raisins. Get out of my way. We are going across. Try it, mister. You'll get both barrels. Sai, you hold these irons. You hold them tight. Suck. Pa, what are you going to do? You will see what I am going to do. You're trespassing on railroad property. my neck. How far do you think you're going to get bucking the railroad? Come on, we're sure, huh? Eh? With six loads of muscat, sure you'll show them. You'll get your head busted. <laughs> hanging over them, the threat of the railroad. Ah, they got past the crossing at Madero. They did? Well, they won't get far. The heat'll get them. Anyway, they'll never get over the mountains. If they do, we'll be waiting for them. <laughs> you know where old Tompkins is just about now? At home with his fat wife. <laughs> In my village, they have a saying. A man must also go to bed with his conscience. What's he going to tell his wife? Huh? Yeah, we better do a lot of fast talking. The way he ditched us. 
Oh, you know what he's going to tell her. We're crazy, all of us, that we don't get to San Francisco, huh? But we get there. We show him. Yeah, right now, San Francisco is a long way off. Ah, like I tell my boy today, we all come much longer away than that. Turkey, huh? Greece. Italia. Germany. I come all the way from Kentucky in a Zulu car. Me, my kinfolk, all the livestock. I didn't come all this way just to be pushed around. In America, somebody push you. You push him back, huh? Yeah, right. Oh, look. Sorry, here. He make a map for us. Here, look. Well, we start here. We go north along the railroad. Turn here. And today we come this far. Hmm? Now, tomorrow, we turn here. We go over this mountain. We save us maybe two whole days. Then it's three, four days into San Francisco, huh? I say, uh, if for the railroad, they don't stop us. They don't stop us. The mountains got me worried. Uh, the map say the road go over the mountain? We go over the mountain. Did she go past? Why? What's the matter? It's a killer. It's steep and narrow. A lot of mean twists and turns. The Mesoc. We have pretty heavy load. Why we worry now, huh? When we get there, we worry. Uh, yeah, good. Hey. Hmm? Uh, uh. Yeah, I think maybe you got the right idea. Hey. We got some sleep. Huh? <laughs> good. We feel better morning, huh? Canita. What is it? Voilà. or a bobcat. I think maybe Judas have a bad dream. Huh? You do the right thing. Everybody go back to sleep. You too. I will keep look. Two. 
In a while. I couldn't hold him. I counted him, Pa. Two horses got away. Two? Two from a ten. Rock on a railroad. She gets to you even when she no try. She's sure to melt. No. Don't make a mistake. It is not the railroad. It is Mr. Somebody. He should melt. Don't worry. We find the horses. Yeah. The way that whistle scared them, they're halfway home by now. Miss Oak, does it mean uh, one of us have to stay behind? Uh, Nobody stays behind. We all go. What are we going to do? Pull in wagons with our hands? No, we don't pull them with our hands. We put all the boxes on four wagons. We go slower, but we go. How far you think we're going to get? We already lost two wagons. We ain't even started yet. Maybe we lose three more wagons, huh? Maybe we only get to San Francisco with one wagon. Maybe we only got one box of raisins to sell. But we do it together. We show that railroad. You understand? I understand myself. Now there are four. They pass through parched country covered with sun-scorched grass, then along slopes of manzanita and mesquite, which rose toward the Gabalon Mountains and the dangers of Pichico Pass. For me, please. Huh? Hurry. Uh -huh. Huh. Which one of you is Misak Petrosian? Me. What do you want? I've been looking for you. I'm from San Francisco. This road does not belong to the railroad. It belongs to the state of California. Permission to pass, not revocable at any time. I say that right, Ryan? You told them right, Pa. We are going over that pass. Nobody is going to stop us. Nobody. Now, once again. Hey! Hey! What are you doing, huh? Take it easy. Now, take it easy. I'm a reporter from the Bulletin. We want to get a story about you and your friends. Story? What kind of story? About the railroad. The way they're pushing this valley around. People have got their eyes on you. They want to be with you. This thing's been building up for a long time. We want to get some pictures. Pictures? Of this? It's news. Whether you get over the pass or not, it's still news. Mr. Reporter, we get over that pass. If we have to carry the raisins, one by one, like ants carry sand, we get over that pass.
Champion Spot here. Because of prepackaged meats, real bones are scarce, leaving most dogs bone hungry. But nutritious milk bone dog biscuits satisfy bone hunger. They provide chewing exercise to help keep teeth healthy and strong. Wow. Milk bone also removes tooth tartar, a prime cause of bad breath in dogs. Remember, milk bone satisfies your dog's bone hunger. I'm going to prove that new Nabisco spoon-sized shredded wheat is better than ever. The sizograph proves it's smaller. Now it's <laughs> very small. Because it's smaller, the toastograph proves it's toastier. Since it's toastier, it's crispier. The crispograph... Why not just say new spoon-sized shredded wheat tastes better? Very unscientific, madam. Mmm, but it does. <laughs> new from Nabisco. Now there are three. Before them, the coastal plains. Another two days, They'd pass through Gilroy, Morgan Hill, San Jose. Now to the farmers along the way, they have become a symbol of all the dreams that brought them from all over the world to California. What? Frisco or bust? Frisco or bust, bust? Bust! Hey, thank you! See you! Frisco or bust! Where are they now? Just this side of San Mattel. Well, stop them. I don't care how you do it, just stop them. It has taken them almost two weeks to cover the distance from Fresno to South San Francisco. But now they can feel the breezes coming in off the ocean. Just one more day, and they will discharge their crops on the dock of the Embarcadero. to read? Read! Come 
quick, back to the train. Well, the three wagons, we can find enough pieces to make one. They got the harness. We patch it up. Oh, yeah. They don't hurt to the raisins. We can still pick up with the raisins. We can't feel them back in the boxes. Bravo, Ponucci. Huh? Look, Pa. Just one to face the vast power of the railroad concentrated in San Francisco. Bedrosian, California's governor-elect Hiram Johnson finally established the principle that in cases involving the public service, the state had not only the right, but the obligation to protect the people's interest. 
It happened because one small, obstinate group of Americans refused to accept an authority they considered unjust. These cameras are filming an unrehearsed two-hour panel discussion on dental health. Among other things, these mothers talked about toothbrushing and toothpaste. Let's listen to some excerpts about Crest and the importance of dental health. And the one who is eight, no sooner does she get a tooth in than it's got a hole in it. Do you think toothpaste can help? I feel very frankly that uh, Crest has helped my children because the first time we took him, we had three cavities. And when we started using Crest, he has had one cavity in the last year and a half, and Christy has had none. How did you start using Crest? Did you see it? Because, of, because of the advertising. They usually have so much percentage fewer cavities, and they usually had two test groups. One mm -hmm. who brushed with Crest, but without the Floristan, and brushed in exactly the same way. And then the other one who used the Crest formula. Well, something that I have always wondered about that uh, advertisement was how did they know they didn't have those children locked up in a room where they was watching them every time they brushed their teeth. How did they know that those kids all done it just like they're supposed to? Well, don't you imagine in these two test groups they got an equal number of those who probably didn't stick to it as well as they should, and one would balance out the other. So that This lady is correct, and because of such tests, Crest is the only toothpaste recognized effective against cavities by the American Dental Association. Their Council on Dental Therapeutics says, Crest has been shown to be an effective decay preventive dentifrice that can be of significant value when used in a conscientiously applied program of oral hygiene and regular professional care. I think you've got to give them a good diet. What else is important for good dental health? Learn uh, the proper way of brushing and the regular checkups and then use the best dentifrice that uh, is available that will cut down the cavities, which personally I feel is pressed. Shouldn't your family be using Crest, the toothpaste for families who want fewer cavities? Before previewing next week's great adventure, here is Gerald Goff, a teacher and a member of the National Education Association, with a postscript on tonight's story. One man against many. One single wagon got through. And even the six that started were so few, so small a force. But Mizak Bedrosian had the most powerful force in the world, a belief, the miracle of an idea, and the conviction to carry it out against whatever odds. In our country, one man can stand up for his rights and start a chain reaction. Maybe at the beginning he acts just for himself, but often one man's problem becomes everyone's concern. Mizak Bedrosian's victory turned out to be not just his, but his whole state's. He learned the lesson of faith in one's convictions. Justice, which we prize, is not just learned, it is earned. And earning it can be the great adventure. Here are a few scenes from our next episode of The Great Adventure. General Washington's asking one of the officers of this regiment to act as a spy. I'll tell the general there are no volunteers. Colonel? I'll go, sir. Nathan. You can't. We all respect your position, Captain Hull. Hale has the right to make his own decision. Don't forget, the blacksmith shop. If you have any prayers, scholar, you had better say them now. The Great Adventure has been brought to you by Crest, tested and proved effective against cavities, and Nabisco, makers of quality crackers and cookies.